The next one we had on there is procedures for repairing and returning meals. So we do have some meals getting broken in schools, and I guess I just want to make sure we have a clear procedure on what we do with broken meals. Okay. I'm not very good at doing the little put the keys back on and look the scissors, my, the scissors, my, the little white things underneath the kids, or underneath the keys are called scissors. It was funny because I was at Mount Valley the other day and, and I sent a girl down to Jared Judy. I said, go tell, take this key to Mr. Judy and tell him I need scissors to fit this meal. <laughs> and she came back with a little tiny pair of scissors. And, so it doesn't appear from those little white things underneath the keys are called scissors. <laughs> so she's like, you gave me these scissors. Well, yeah. Okay, that's what I asked for. Anyway, so um, I can fix a lot of the meals as far as when they start wigging out um, the wrong. Some of the, the champions have been pretty good at knowing what keystrokes to hit, but I don't know if they just don't have the time or they're not persistent. I probably have fixed 80% of them that have come to the office. Um, but you can call or you can do the online chat to see if they'll take your meal back. But a lot of times they'll say, well, you're at tiebreaker and that meal's supposed to be at Rimrock. And we tried to tell them, yeah, meals in our district are not always at the schools that they say they are because when Rod and I started to dish meals out, putting things on me they were tied to a specific school. So anyway, they're they're supposed to take them. So I would say keys and those kinds of glue repairs, kids knock the keys off, you guys take care of them. If they get so that they won't boot up or what were some of the problems yours yours had out there, Brett? Sometimes kids spill things on them. And we can't, you know, and, and sometimes I can repair them and sometimes I can't. And at some point we're going to, schools are probably going to have to ask parents for that repair money because the warranty doesn't work as good as we hoped. For some of the new ones, they'll take it back, but if the kids spilled something on them, or like, I think they left an ice pack was on the of yours. Yeah. Some of them we've had to just send back because they just won't, I can't get them to fix. And Peggy's really good at sending those back. So I would say fix the keys, fix those little kinds of repairs. If they just won't turn on and off or like, um, Jared said he had a worked keyboard. I made Josh work on it until we got that fixed. So you know. we fixed the, uh, one of the keys about four times. So at that point, you get on my chat and then see if they'll take it back. And then yeah. Yeah. What? Well, the live chat. I mean, you put this. You put new scissors on. Right. Yeah. She says I have it again. Get on my chat and see if they'll yeah. take it back. And if they said they'll take it back, then send it over to me. Send me the email that has the chat with live support. And um, give me that and, and that information. I'll try and do whatever I can, and then we can send it back because we've been retagging them. So I give them to Linda and say, change it in the asset tag stuff. That we're sending this meal back. They'll send us a new one, and then we'll get it back out to you. So if they need to be sent in, I guess I'm saying send it. Let me know what the what the problem is with it. I'll try to fix it. If I can fix it, then I'll send it back to you. If I can. And we'll send it in. Does that make sense? I think that's the best way to handle it. But we've been we've done pretty good for as many meals as we have in the district. We haven't had such good with that. So. Yeah, we're about thirty seven hundred, aren't we? Yeah, we just quite a few. Quite a few meals. So and like I said, I sat in one teacher's room and really tried to get that and it you know if they break the little bubble underneath, that's bad. That's severe damage. It's not under warranty. You can't sell that. Those little bubbles get broken then. That's the, you're telling the kids they're being too rough. So. Are, are kids being rough with them? Are we seeing them? Or? Yeah, that's the same thing. 
Yeah, I know for us they're not rough with them but because of the small desk and having their books on the desk and the meals sometimes they'll fall off. Yeah, and they do. And, and I think that's what happened with the one that they said they, it was warped. I think what happened is it got dropped and it kind of jammed it funny, but we were able to open it up and get it back in place. Um, dish racks. Somebody bought little dish racks and that holds the meals pretty good instead of having to put them in their desks. Anyway. Is there anything else we need to do to, I don't know, either educate kids or just try to, any system things we can do to, and again, I, we haven't had a lot of damage, it's been coming down out there, so. Yeah, just put the fear of death into them, teach them how to hold them when they're going from one place to another. Yeah, so yeah don't let them grow. We have enough paper for the first few thirds. Um, no. So again, let me let me just uh, again explain our situation, our, our fund funding situation, and then where the plans are. Um, so and April's right there. April can talk about it much better than I can. Maybe you just want to fact check me, so I don't have to speak. Okay, so you just talk about funding something. So so again, when the props when the props failed in November, probably they did fail, right? Yeah. I lost track now, but. Um, we didn't just lose money for the future, like starting next year, we lost this year's money. So anything that we haven't received up to that point, we, they said they cannot legally pay. So due to, there were two big parts to that, one huge part to that, and then my part that's big to me, but not as big as April, but it's a small chunk and a big chunk. But the first part is it gave us this flexibility that we could, um, instead of paying for teachers, we could use that money for other programs or operational and we took advantage of that so that we wouldn't have to keep reducing programs and budgets and those kinds of things. But when those props fell in November, basically that said, you can only use that money for teachers. You can't use that for operational costs. But this is point, past the point in the year where we could actually hire teachers to get paid for it. And that's about $3 million for our district. Is that right? Well, the overall is about $2 million. Okay, about $2 million. Total. The total is $2 million. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's sitting there with a big question mark on it. And then this, with that, as part of that two million, the other part was the second half of our technology. Mm -hmm. So with classroom tech money, um, our allocation to our district should be right around three hundred forty, three hundred fifty thousand dollars. We got an upfront payment in September, <coughs> but now we're we're one hundred fifty thousand dollars in the hole right now. Um, one hundred and fifty to one hundred and seventy, unless that money comes back. And so right now the legislature, uh, there's a house bill. Um, if you're if you uh, are so inclined to email representatives, this would be a good one to get behind. House Bill 65 um, is really a whole harmless bill that says we we will we will keep the funding intact for this year, and we're not going to make school districts take that hit. And that should be going out to vote fairly soon. I think it's still in the committee, but that should be coming out soon. So House Bill 65 um, is crucial that that passes for this year. If that doesn't pass, you'll have to, that's technology funding. That's that whole two million dollars. So classroom tech is part of that. Then in addition to it, it's this other um, you know, one point eight million or whatever it is for our district. This operational cost. Because if we lose that, that goes. We'll have to take it out of our fund balance. It's going to drop our fund balance by almost half. I mean, it'll really put us in a bad situation. Okay, that's just this this year. So our the situation we're in, just as far as the needles go, is we we were able and I were very, very careful. We talked to the State Department last July before we ever signed a contract and said, if those fail, is that going to impact state tech? And they said, we don't think it will. It's a small chunk of money. We don't think it will have any impacts. And we talked to them about signing the agreement with Renaissance. We basically fronted the money. This is this is probably going to be for the home of our credit card. It's just like a credit card purchase. We bought it with money, um, borrowed money in another place, paid for it. With the intent that we'll replace that money when it comes from the state, and now we don't know if it's coming from the state. So really, we're one hundred fifty thousand upside down um, with with the needles. Okay, um, we luckily there's some old money that we can use to kind of offset that. Um, and again, it'll, it'll just deplete us as far as any any reserves we have in technology. It'll completely deplete us. We're fine. But it doesn't give us any money going forward. 
Um, if that money comes in, then you still have a little bit of a savings account from old state tech money and, and a little bit from a grant that we wrote last year. And so we'll be able to do something, but whether it's be able to do all of three grades, I'm not sure. So then the next question is, what's, what's going to happen next year? And that's where there's this $30 million sitting out there um, that was originally allocated for um, for all those props, for all those measures. So for paper performance, yeah, uh, classroom technology, even the one-to-one -one computers are part of that $30 million. And that's where Governor Otter has put a task force together to try to figure out what they should do with this $30 million. So interestingly, um, this morning I was in a thank you. That's fine. Did I didn't go speak? I was on the straight and narrow. No, you have to do it on. All right. So this morning there was a regional uh, superintendent's conference, and we had a conference call with um, representatives back in Boise. And it's kind of interesting. They said that the governor's put this task force together saying, how about you do that $30 million? But the legislators as a whole have their backs up saying, that's not governor's money, that's our money. That's what we're do. So that task force could come out with some recommendations, and the legislature could completely say, sorry, that's not what we want to do with it. So as far as the next year, we have no idea. So what I've been telling schools at the meetings is right now, uh, you can buy a Neo for 99 bucks. That's $5 cheaper than we were getting them for with this multi-year contract with Renaissance. So if you've got PTO funds, um, some schools have used matching funds. They said instead of buying a copier before you go out, we're going to buy, you know, instead of buying a $5,000 copier, we're going to get 50 Neos and start moving our own. And I think if you've got flexibility, either current facilities money, PTO money to do that, it's a great time to do it because they really drop their costs on it. Uh, to the point where the overall agreement we had at Renaissance doesn't make as much sense because we're not getting that $50 a meal savings like we were last year. Does that make sense? So um, that being said, if we do get money from the state, those are still for me priority number one um, as far as using classroom and checking what kids have. Does that help answer that? And priority number two is probably the people. Can I just interject one thing yes, since I have? Um, in March, we have a supplemental levy that we're going to be putting out to vote again. It's, it's renewing our $3 million supplemental levy. And what that supplemental levy does is it goes for all of our operating costs. I'd like to really just let you know that we really need your support to, you know, get that passed. I want you to vote. Um, but we really need, we want everyone to go out and really support that. Because that's, if we lose the $2 million and we lose the $3 million, well, it's been a $5 million. So <laughs> maybe Scott too. <laughs> we both signed some things. No, um, just a reminder, when you see that coming around, when you see that notification, that's really important. Because unfortunately, with the state funding dropping, the teachers have had to go out and pass levies for their patrons to approve. And we're, we have a $3 million one coming up for the whole month or so. Just wanted to get Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. That. I, I, it's crucial we support it. And I always, it's, it's interesting, just trying to explain school finance to my neighbors, it, it's a nightmare. There's nothing simple about it. So we try to explain, yeah, we pay for this, that's federal money, or this is coming from the state, or we know we just passed a building bond and a private facilities bond two years ago, a private facilities levy two years ago, but this is supplemental money, and you can only use, you know, those to buy certain things. It's, there's just nothing easy about it. But just letting them know that it's crucial for us for operating costs, I think is probably the best thing we can do. And that's the difference is the building the building money and the pocket facility can't really be used for day-to-day -day operations kind of things. It's really long term overhauling the structure in schools, uh, overhauling our network and those kind of things are really what gets paid for on the plant facility funds. So, and no salaries gets paid. Yeah, no salaries from plant facilities or from building bonds. And here's I don't want to go doom and gloom, but here's kind of our reality that I started to realize is, as Wayne and Craig and Brandon and I have started looking long term at our tech plan is we've lived fairly high on the hog with technology because of our building bonds. And so we built these schools, we had money left over from those schools that have allowed us to buy brand new computers with a lot of districts having to refurbish computers. They've let us put in some great software. Um, they let us do a lot of things. But we're now at a point where those building bonds are not going to be part of our fiscal reality um, probably for another three to five years, best case scenario. That's the best case scenario. And so now we really have to start looking at how do we tighten our belts, are there things that we can do to, um, because we just, we're not going to have that influx of money that we've lived off of for about the last 10 years. So, 
Not that we're doing the bloom, but that's, yeah. It's, that's uh, just the it's reality of where we are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, like you said, we've been so fortunate that other right. districts haven't had those opportunities, but right. now we're having to look at maintaining that. So I just had um, Linda and Craig put together a computer list for me, and we do 4,000, isn't it? Right around 4,000 computers in our district. Was that all? I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it pushed up higher than Okay, but if you think about that, and I would say pretty much every, almost every one of those computers was bought from the building along the way. And then we did the bright lights, okay, and we've got about three to four hundred bright lights in the classrooms now, again, all from Longman. Um, the Neos kind of, well, Neos mostly came from um, the class money, but our Renaissance software came from bond money, fast forward software came from bond money. I mean, we're talking in several, and by several, I mean, four to five million dollars worth of tech over the last seven or eight years that is really one time money. And so we have to figure out, okay, we did that once, but now how do we replace those things so we can keep operating them? And that's where things like supplemental levies, tax installments, and things are huge for us. So, yeah, been a little, little sobering for me to look at where we are. Okay, so the answer to that question, Brett. <laughs> Any other others there? Okay. Um, what I was forgetting about, I've had a, a handful of teachers email me about the filter override. So does everybody in here understand the process for the filter override? And are you comfortable with knowing your teachers? So it's probably our tech, it's probably our schools that don't have people here that have the question marks. So I'll have to figure out a way to get them up to speed. Um, and again, it is, it's not an instantaneous thing. Overall procedures, I really don't care if they take that quiz or not, but they really need to go through, watch that internet safety bundle. So again, they're not doing things like overriding the filter with their right boots on. Um, sign the form. Um, I think I have your signature on it, don't I? The, the, the building mentors? Yep. And the principal. And then turn it into the tech. Uh, it, Joe's pretty good about turning it on once he gets those. So but we, we really need that paper trail and say, yeah, they saw the safety training. That way, if there is an issue, we can go back and say, you, you knew what the rules were, and you didn't follow them. Now we've got a, we've got a situation we need to address. So, okay. Um, upcoming events. Um, Cliff started a, uh, a Web 2.0 class last night. Did you have all these people still up? Uh, I had one person that was interested. Let me know. Okay. So there's kind of like one more chance for people to, to jump in and take that class. Once it goes through about two class periods, it's too late to add people to it, but if anybody in your um, schools are interested in that, he's covering my big campus, which is a, I think a really, really good tool for our teachers, all the way from Tiddy Art up through 12. And what's your other big one you're covering? SkyDrive. Oh, it's SkyDrive. Anybody in here using SkyDrive? It is a great tool. It's, it's one of those tools that we, we started with it, and then Microsoft's made about three significant changes to it since we started, but I really like um, what they're doing with it right now. Provides great backup for your documents. If you got in early, you got 25 gigs of storage. If you got in late, it's still 7 gigs, which is, for most of us, plenty to back up things. And it gives me access on my phone, on my iPad, on my computer at home, anywhere I've got access to my documents. And so, just a good thing to somehow, how, let me ask you, how do you guys get that information out to teachers? Do you ever have time in faculty meeting or any time at all to share those kinds of things with other teachers? Email. Is there any, you do or you don't? I email out. You email out? Okay. It's quick and easy. Yeah, yeah. Most of our teachers see this and they go. Right. Yeah, and that's, that's <laughs> the hard thing is there's great tools to help them, but they feel like it's one more thing to learn. And so I, I, it's such a delicate the, balance. The nice thing that. that our school has done with my big campus and SkyDrive is we link to all of our PLC agendas mm -hmm. to it so that they're shared documents so that we can go in at different, even at the same time, go in and make editing changes to these documents, yeah. write notes and things like that. So it's, it's been really great that way. Nice. Okay. Um, you know, I'll probably just try to encourage principals to let you have time in back of the meeting to show teachers, you know, you take them to the computer lab and let them get their hands on. But there's, there's some really good tools we have with that. And speaking of SkyDrive, uh, Lane's got an exciting change to announce about SkyDrive. We are we are making uh, well, Microsoft is making a shift there on us. So. <laughs> um, Microsoft is migrating us to Live 365, which is basically the next rendition of Exchange 2013. Coming with that, 
passwords are going to have to change to eight characters. They're going to have to have letters, numbers, special characters, and caps. So that's coming around spring break time. Will, will teachers be able to pick their own? We're working a system that they'll, they'll pick their own. That would be huge. I so I think it's a manageable change if we can pick our own. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll hear about that one. <laughs> <clears throat> like we can take you what they've got now and just add to it. Yeah, so yeah. And I, I have a standard over. password that meets those. I know you shouldn't have standard passwords, but I have one that meets those requirements. I can stick with that and get it back to Yeah, if anybody gets my password, I'm dead alone. Yeah. Okay. So I'll come around spring break. Right. Right. That's what we're anticipating. No. Okay. And then, but as far as other than the password, we're not going to see a lot of changes. Is that right? Everything else should be about the same. Um, so when you just make the change for login and for when you log into the computer, and it will just be across the board on the campus. So, so yeah, yeah across not. across the board would be your email, your computer account, my big campus, Power School. We're working with uh, to try to type Power School here. Yeah, okay. I don't know about Power School. Yeah, Renaissance definitely not. Not a type. But they can we change our passwords in Renaissance or yes. not? We can, can't you? Yes. And so you could. Yeah, they're going to change their own. They have to be smart enough to change their Right. So we may just show them how to do that. They do want to change. That's some sarcasm. Just a little bit. I think those are our main ones. Mile posts, teachers pick their own password for mile posts. Yeah. And most of the What's that? And you can change those. Yeah, most, a lot of teachers just need to their current logging, which they know, so right. they don't have to change it. Right. Like they don't have to. The same. But if they want to, they, there are systems they can change themselves. We are moving to federated services, so that could help oh, all that. Right. So federated services, it's a fancy word to say single log on, single sign on, which means you can go through one web page and sign on and then open, you know, whether it's um, any web page applications, so Power School, um, Milepost. Um, even school that through the State Department and Discovery Streaming, all that can be one logon and that can get you access to all those hours. So we're hoping to get that rule and that be a, a nice that should count that's upgraded with Office okay. 365. Um, there was also, and I think I'll just mention this and then we can kind of kick it around for the next couple months, um, but there is a new version of Office. Um, I've installed it on my computer. It, it's a significant change again. And so I'm still kind of getting used to it. We don't have to move to that. I don't know that there's any reason that we have to recreate one. Yeah. Not this year. Okay. <laughs> but if we felt, <laughs> come on, if, if, we, if we want to, I mean, that's something we want to seriously look at over summer and something we can look at. So, but <laughs> say that again. 2013, and, and we have licenses for it, so if anybody's interested in trying this, let me know. Yeah, this might be a good group if you're, but yeah, I'm going to tell you, it's been, it's been a little quirky on my machine, and it's not necessarily the program itself, but because it's brand new, other programs aren't talking to it the way they should, and I, I might be the only one that likes to send an email from, say, Adobe inside of Reader, when you file and send an email, and it will recognize 2013, so there's a few hiccups like that that, I'm kind of back and forth on whether I should upgrade it or not upgrade it. Evernote, there's no... Yeah, Evernote, which I use all the time, I can't, it's not talking to it the same way. So, like I said, I'm not excited about rolling it out right now. By summer, things might have changed a little bit. But again, we went to this uh, model with Microsoft where we're basically renting our software from Microsoft. And so we can upgrade really anytime we want on those things. We've got licenses to do that. And I, we talked about this before, but again, that does also allow teachers to buy Microsoft products for twenty bucks, wasn't it? For twenty dollars, ten dollars, ten. Yeah, so for ten dollars, you can install Office at home. And I, I hope more teachers are taking advantage of that. That's a good thing. And I think it's an easy one. So the link that. That's in the D93 teachers group on my big campus. I'll, I'll repost it in our tech group as well, but if one of the D93 teachers in my big campus, it's there. Yeah, it's pretty simple. How are you? Not lost anymore. <laughs> That's great. 